you should be called the Parfessor because all this do young man does is rack up par. Parfessor. I love that actually. You are? Oh, he's the Parfessor. He's, really? he's the Parfessor. Let's go. And if you're looking for collaborations, try and reach out. Reaching out, we're going to just rely on the comment section down below to bring you those top six golf courses there is to offer in Fort Lauderdale. The goal is to actually come back and maybe even go there, re rate these top golf courses based on your comments down below. So, without further ado, let's bring you in to number six on our list. It's an opinionated list. We use Google review and just kind of Google imaging to kind of put together what our top list is. And that Deer Creek Golf Course built in 1971 by Arthur Hills, stretching 7,050 yards. It's hard not to bring this into a, the equation of a great golf course. It has a slope of 133 and a rating of 74.8. Being opened year-round, it has five different tee boxes to choose from with the driving range, chipping, and putting area. And an insane course just to start us off in the Fort Lauderdale area. Now, if you're from this area, you probably know better which ones are the top ones. It's constantly changing, but Google doesn't lie. You know, it's pretty consistent. And at our next golf course, I think it's hard not to consistently think about which is the popular courses, which ones are the historical courses within the Fort Lauderdale area. It's big, but it's not that big, if one would say. It's tight. And here at Fort Lauderdale Country Club, it's hard not to pick the North course because of its great ratings online. This private but open to the public every once in a while traditional style course stretches a long 7,084 yards. It has a slope of 122 and its par is 72 with a rating of 73.2. It was built in 1952 with Bermuda grass greens and Bermuda grass putting grass surfaces. Did have some major updates in 2000 and six driving range golf school academy golf pro and other major golf amenities along with another courses to decide which ones you want to pick at number five this this is a long list so if you're making it this far hang on tight there's some great golf left in this area fort lauderdale been down there I haven't played as much golf as i would have loved to but there's some great golf within that area. And more importantly, now at number four on our list, it's hard not to just lose your mind at this course. Mary Golf Country Club Oaks. Now there's a couple courses here. And more historically, which is rich history dating back to 1957, the Palms course was founded by George Palmer and hosts a 50-room lodge opened in 1962, stretches 6,910 yards for a par 71. You can find some good rates online. George Fazio and Tom Fazio were the original golf architects of this course. A lot of people did touch it, make some updates, but for the most part, with a rating of 73.1 and a slope of 128, it's a championship course with a rich history and a country club nonetheless. If you get out there every once in a while, is open to those that get lucky to play it. And you got to spend some money more. And you know what? What is a list, an independent list, by someone that doesn't live in the area without an extremely controversial one here? Right at that middle point at number three with Carolina Golf Club. You're thinking, whoa, wait a second. This might even be close. That's what I'm reading online. But there's some good golf here being built in 1971 by Bruce Evans. It's a year-long course that offers terrific views and challenging play for each golfer. Now, it could be seasonal. We don't know. You know but for the most part, I believe this course would be open with four different tee boxes to choose from. One stretching 6,774 yards with a rating of 72.5 and a slope of 141 it's a good golf course you know it's going to start you off it's a well-groomed course from what all the reviews said but things start to turn on google recently so it's hard to tell but sometimes you got to give it you know some some free publicity here at number three 
well, believe it or not, there's still two courses left to look at. If you fast forward, go back. There's still great golf left. Again, this is an opinionated list. We need your comments down below to let us know which ones we're getting right. And more importantly, which ones are completely wrong. Let's take a look at number two, this open course with 36 holds to choose from jacaranda golf club a fun name but is it worth it does it deserve to be number one well some of the reviews online are pretty nasty it deserves maybe to at least be noted that this could be an opinionate list where private course really plays a factor in this area are there some hidden gems is it mostly private courses? We need to turn this into a more of a reddit field because this course stretches 7,247 yards. That's a lot of golf to keep up with. There's water all over the place. It offers challenging views, challenging holes from what it's reading online. But for the most part, this part 71 it was built in 1970 by Mark Hanneman and Bobby Weed. It was a 19... 70s kind of design to it where it's extremely aggressive with a slope of 134 and a rating of 75.5 that's that's hard there's six t boxes to choose from that should really say it there how interesting these courses get there's still one more course to let look at plantation preserve golf course this one stretches 7148 yards was built in 2006 doesn't have the greatest google reviews but with decent t rates t time rates it seems to be the local pick within the area i think resort courses kind of dominate some of these areas and we got as we got some of those on this list but more importantly this is more of an independent reddit type feel we might have no comments that's why you got to get it started down below whether you agree disagree or just move on. This is the professor.